have a look at this this one's moving oh man oh man look at that <laughs> oh it's pointing down at me dear oh dear i could be in trouble here oh beautiful have a look at that well i am in for an absolute treat tonight here at the Mount Pleasant Radio Astronomy Observatory. Now, this is part of the Astronomical Society of Tasmania. I happen to have a friend who is part of that group and she has arranged to get a key so that I can have access here tonight. And I thank you very much, Lisa, for that and everybody else associated with the Astronomical Society of Tasmania. So. Have a look at this. There's a couple of radio telescopes there in the background. Now, at the moment, I don't want to go in until I've got someone here to let me in, but the, the gate's open. Look at that nice clear sky at this stage. So I'm just hoping, like crazy, that the sky remains clear. So what I'm going to do is just walk up and down the fence here and just see if I can get a bit of a view. But I think the perspective is perfect for shooting over into that eastern sky so the city or lights of the town are more over towards the west there's there's hills there so that i don't think that'll be too bad shooting down that way ah oh, this would be fantastic can't wait so you can see the two telescopes here there's a little one closer down the hill the big one right at the back and just as i was setting up here that little one started moving it moved a long way and it sort of has this loud whirring noise so uh, I can imagine if you were up there standing next to it and that suddenly happened in the middle of the night, you might get a bit of a fright. So I'll be aware of that when I come back here later on. Well, you just got to love Tasmania, don't you? There is so much variety down here to have a look at. I had no idea that I'd be looking at radio telescopes here tonight. I just happened to be driving past, saw the sign, saw the big dishes, drove down the dirt road, and it's just developed from there. So... Uh, I just love Tasmania, I can tell you. All right, well, I don't think there's too much more I can do now, so I'm just going to wait until later on, closer to dark, when I come back here and start shooting this amazing location. So I'll see you back here later. Well, here we are at the telescope array. We'll call it an array. There's only two or three of them, but that's okay. And Lisa is here with me. Lisa has very kindly helped me to get access to this place. Lisa, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And Lisa is a local, uh, uh, I was going to say, what's a Hobartian? Well, no, Hobartian works. Hobartian? Hobartian. <laughs> that sounds a bit like Martian, but anyway, that's quite appropriate. Uh, so Lisa lives here in Hobart, and she's part of the Astronomical Society, and they've got a great little setup down here where they come with their telescopes and cameras and what have you, and shoot the night sky, <clears throat> I'm sure, till the wee hours of the morning sometimes. So, uh, Lisa, thank you. Very much appreciate your help to get into this place tonight. Um, and before we go, now you do a little bit of photography yourself. Tell us a little bit about your setup and what you like to shoot. Uh, I'm mainly focusing on deep skies, so at the mo moment I'm particularly interested in galaxies. Yep. So I'm using a Celestron Edge um, Schmidt Cassier grain telescope, so it's got a 1400 focal length that's yep. with a reducer on it. Yep, good. Um, with an equatorial mount to you know, account for the rotation of the Earth. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually using a, a, desi a cooled astro camera, the mm -hmm. um, ZWO, ZWOASI 533, quite a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Um, but I've also got a little wide field set up as well. Yep. Yeah, just particularly interested yeah. for the winter, focusing on galaxies. Good. And, and you do a bit of nightscape photography. You say you're a Nikon Z shooter. Yes. Yeah, yes, I've good. I've got the Z62. Yes. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's a great camera. Well, that's what I'll be shooting here tonight. Um, and have a look at that sky. It is absolutely amazing. One thing I can tell you about um, weather forecasting, it's never 100% right. I mean, it was saying there was about 40, 50% cloud cover. Now, I, I better not speak too soon, but... Yes, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Anyway, thank you again. No pleasure. Thank you. No worries. Okay, well, here I am outside the fence, looking fantastic in the background. 
Uh, the guys who are operating the telescope are just leaving, so that's what you can see the red glow there is partly the taillights of the car. And uh, yeah, I think, look, the sky, there's a few wispy clouds around, but I'm pretty confident because over there there's a lot of clear sky. So I'm going to get my 20mm uh, lens on, see if I can get this thing in, and I'll probably shoot with a few different focal lengths and uh, just see how it goes from there. All right, so you can see here, I've uh, set my camera up. I've got my Z6 Mark II with the 20 mil f1.8 lens shooting on a high tripod. So this is pretty high uh, in comparison to what I normally shoot, but I want to try and get over, uh, over this fence in the foreground here because I can't go inside the fence. Now, um, the cloud behind there is clearing. There's a big gap of clear sky over here, all the way around to the south and at the west and the north. It's just in this easterly bit here, there's a bit of light cloud that's come across. I'm pretty confident that that's gonna disappear soon, uh, but I'm shooting anyway. I've got to have lots of compositions and I'm gonna work out what I'm gonna do with them. Uh, my plan here is to, is to use tracked skies. So uh, the sky here is very dark. It's really good actually over towards the east here. Because there's a bit of cloud there, that's actually gathering whatever light pollution may be present and so when the cloud disappears the sky will become a lot darker. So that's looking out over towards the west and you can see Orion there setting over the hills over there. Uh, a few houses down there in the distance but uh, Overall, it's a good spot here. It's elevated, pretty high. There's a lot of hills around, so um, the uh, horizon changes depending on where you are. But yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's cold, but not windy, which is the main thing. I was really worried about wind tonight, but so far it's looking absolutely fantastic. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, it's a flight path. There's an air airport just down over the hill. Yeah, so we're going to get a few of those babies through the night. So I'll just avoid those when, I, when they come along. So I'm just finished a pano. So sweeping around from the south, right around to the east. And the idea of that is to capture the rising Milky Way galactic core pretty much arching a little bit over the top. It won't be a complete arch because I haven't captured enough sky. But what I'm going to do a little bit later is uh, do a tracked uh, sky. So uh, I'm waiting for that Milky Way to come up a little bit higher and it's going to be over just behind me over this side. But the actual uh, settings I'm using, because there's a little bit of ambient light around, there's a light on inside the shed over there, uh, and there's a couple of houses down here shining up onto the actual device. So i am lowered my ISO quite considerably. I'm shooting at f2.8, 15 second shutter speeds at ISO 2500 at this point. Uh, I'll experiment a bit. I've done a couple at ISO 3200, some at ISO 2000, just to see. I could probably go right down to 1600 doesn't matter, uh, any of those settings will be pretty good because uh, I know this camera well and it handles all of those different ISOs really well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on the 35mm lens and try and get a bit of a different perspective and then I'm going to go down to the other, there's two other dishes here, I'm going to try and capture them all. I'll have various compositions, uh, I might not be able to talk you through all of that because it's going to take me a bit of walking to and fro to do it with all the gear I've got. So look, it is magnificent. There's a bit of cloud cover coming and going, but that's really clear. I'm wrapped. This is fantastic.
So this is the sheep paddock with all the usual suspects that you have to dodge walking around here. I'm used to that though. So there are the culprits. Sheep. Everywhere you look down there, there's sheep. Have a look at that. Man, oh man, no wonder there's so much dung all over the ground here. Well, just walking down to that other scope down the back, I found this beautiful lone tree. And if you know me, you know that I cannot resist a good tree. So I have to shoot this. So I'll be shooting this with the 35 millimeter lens in portrait orientation. I'm shooting this 10 seconds shutter speed. It's just gonna be a really simple shot, a uh, single foreground. I'll decide later whether I do a background tracked shot for it, but it's 35 millimeters, uh, F 2.8, 10 second shutter speed, ISO 3200. And I'll just put a tiny little bit of light painting in the foreground, just a really, really little bit, just so I can light this foreground, just a tiny touch, just like that. Well, as you can see, we've got the Hobart Airport directly behind this second telescope down here. There goes a jet right now, heading off somewhere. But have a look at it. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna shoot this one and just see what else I can get in the meantime. Gee, that main scope up there is quite impressive from this back view, looking up behind it, heading towards the west. So, gee, it doesn't matter where you shoot this thing, it looks absolutely amazing. So you've got to be careful where I walk around here, there's logs and sticks everywhere. Have a look at that. Man, oh man, this is, this is fantastic. So I decided to shoot this one with the 35 millimeter lens. I think it works nicely. Uh, the, uh, the galactic core is rising right above it there now and it is looking absolutely brilliant. So these are quite simple to shoot. I'm basically doing single exposure foregrounds or panoramas. Uh, I don't have to do light painting because of the, the silver nature and the white nature of them just reflects whatever ambient light is around here. But uh, yeah, it looks great. I'm gonna move on to the third and final one now. Have a look at this. This one's moving. Oh man, oh man, look at that. <laughs> oh, it's pointing down at me. Dear, oh dear. I could be in trouble here. Oh, beautiful, have a look at that. Oh, I've got to get this. I'm getting it from different angles. Oh man, look at this. Look at this. Clear sky, beautiful array of telescopes. What more could you want? Tasmania, you are putting it on tonight. There it goes again. Okay, well, I've got all of those foreground shots, 20 mil and 35 millimeter. Now I'm gonna get the tracker out. The Milky Way Galactic Core is beautiful in exactly the right place behind these arrays. I'm gonna get that out. It's gonna take me ages to set that up. And by the time I get that done, it's going to be late, so what I'll do, I'm just going to wrap this video up right here. And in a moment, I'm going to show you all of these images that I shot. So many compositions, so many great angles to shoot these things. So once again, I want to thank the, the Hobart Astronomical Society and Lisa in particular for letting me in here tonight. It's been an absolute blast and I appreciate all of you guys watching again tonight. My uh, road trip around Tasmania continues. I've got another great composition lined up not far from here. So I'll see you in the next one. You have a fantastic week. See you later.